And as the theme of the uh, day is today, how can the armoring uh, enhance your sex life or you can get a better sex life through the armoring? Um, that might not be true for everybody, but this is the theme that we have chosen, how the armoring can um, uh, improve your sex life. I had at least a wonderful experience through the armoring in my sex life, but wow. the question, <laughs> once, at least once, <laughs> I can talk about <laughs> <laughs> that's that's enough. If you have a shit sex life, <laughs> once is enough. <laughs> um, uh, but the question is for for each and one of you: um, Why are you here? What would you like to get out of it? Something you are interested in uh, to to hear about? Write <clears throat> it in the chat. <laughs> So that we just get some ideas um, um what we can talk about in the direction of the day everything is welcome so the more you ship in the more you ask the more you share the more we can give back so dan you're the bouncer you let people in yeah yeah thank you so much Okay, curious about uh, it's related not to, to do negative and not to programming. How oh, not to do too much and not too little. Yes, absolutely open to receive no expectations. Yeah, that's not really going to do, man. Kim, you're going to ask a direct question. Come on, give us some meat to chew on. Engage our brains a little bit, you know, like ask questions so we can actually work with something. Maybe that's, maybe that's exactly what she's asking for. Absolutely open to receive. So... And no expectations. Uh, Kim is me. I'm a man. Yeah. yeah. Um, we work with yeah, the feminine inside. I know Dian, but uh, I never um, joined a de-armoring group. Or, and to be honest, I thought you are working with sound and uh, vibration today. I didn't oh, no, that was a couple of days ago. <laughs> Good one. So, yes. So. <laughs> So, but now I'm here and I'm very, um, uh, yeah, open and uh, happy to hear. I have a, a nice friend joining me and uh, yeah, uh, if I have to ask some questions. Uh, Maybe she has some questions. You can write it in the chat box. We don't need to open the mic here yet. Okay. Yeah. But why not take it off, Matt? Like do an introduction and maybe you, you share yeah. about your experience while people are writing their questions. Yeah, please, please continue writing your questions. So before I start with everything, so as you have seen, this is recorded. Um, so you choose how much you want to share here today because we just um, want to share the recording of that webinar because uh, my other people want to have a benefit from. So you do that in a self-responsible way. <clears throat> Then, um, as we talk about sex, we will using words like penis, vagina, wet, hot, naughty, maybe. orgasms. Maybe, maybe we we don't know that this word might fall, so be aware of them. So now I have set them so that you can actually relax around this kind of words. Um, so again, welcome to the uh, how the armoring can improve your sex life webinar. My name is Matt. Uh, one side. Of my screen is Sana, the other side is Diane. I start to introduce myself first. I am a guest teacher of the De Armoring School. I'm into Tantra, sacred sexuality, and uh, on my own awakening journey of sexuality since 1997. Um, I would call myself an explorer. I turn every stone around that I can find. And um, I'm a professional facilitator, body worker. Uh, relationship coach and uh, I love this work to my bones and I give it to Sana or the end you choose you can go Sana <clears throat> okay oh, we have had so many webinars lately so I feel, I feel like a parrot you know <laughs> Hello everyone. So my name is Susanna Beatrice, formerly Sana Sanita, and I am the co-founder together with Dean, the co-founder of the Armoring Arts. 
And uh, like math, I've been on a journey for since 99 something. And I had my kind of conscious sexual awakening with through Tantra and the armoring about 13 years ago. And for me, that has been absolutely life-changing together with everything I discovered before that when it comes to shamanism and healing and massage therapies and primal therapy and God knows what. I noticed when I went into the armoring and the sexual healing work and the conscious sexual awakening work, it kind of <clears throat> aligned everything. And for me, it's uh, really a path that makes me feel more alive, awake, uh, juicy, sensual, creative, and a better person of myself. <laughs> yeah. Mm, good, yeah. Dan. Um, hi, I'm Dan. Um, I've also been uh, exploring all this kind of inner work since I was kind of pretty much full time. So I was 23, but since 17, really. But um, I've kind of gone through waves and ups and downs with uh, with Tantra and multi-relating polyamory and all sorts of stuff. Basically, kind of gone around the block a few times and then realized that that actually fucked me up in my kind of second chakra got jumbled up and the whole relating and the whole relationship I had to, to people and to sex. I mean, the uh, um, people that I relate with as a sexual partners, not, not the friends that really got jumbled up. So that led me then to start the process of celibacy, which is now in the seventh year. So my uh, addition to this webinar, if you like, is going to be the total pole opposite to <laughs> the armoring does. And it did for me in my previous relationships, uh, it changed them and it changed my life. But I can also share a lot of benefits from uh, non-sexual side of uh, the armoring. But this is not this webinar. So anyway, let's see how this uh, game unfolds. And then there's time for questions. I'm happy to answer. All right. Thank you, guys. So um, I guess uh, we just like talk a little bit about our experience of the armoring and how we uh, have a benefit from in our life. And then we would like to hear what you come with. There are a lot of nice questions and comments and statements in the um, uh, chat. So we will work with that. Please write in there. And Deanne, as you see, is just like focused on it. So I guess you pick that out. And thank you. Thank you for doing that. So um, where to start? So how the armoring can contribute to your sexuality i just woke up the other morning and just wrote a post on that on facebook some of you might have seen that is that when i started the tantric journey i just um, um wanted to become a multi-orgasmic man and just wanted to have as many climax and orgasm as i possibly can um, because I love sex and uh, I love everything around sex and and relationship and how to uh, do touch and connection and you know all this kind of bang. and then I noticed somehow that my kind of first training that I did was this Mantak Chia school, the kind of squeezing and connecting and holding and contracting, and um, and I could not master this thing of the so-called ejaculatory choice and i was always ending up where i didn't want to go and that was climaxing and i just and I, I could not crack that nut till i came to that point that my nervous system was always when i was into sexual encounter and engagement on a sympathetic expression so squeezing holding contracting and just like always in this physical activities and uh, and i stored so much energy in my body by doing that to squeeze and um and then i came in 2010 uh this practice of dearmoring uh came my way and uh i just noticed how much kind of tension i held in my body and and that was where i started to work on my muscular tissue and and, and all this uh, areas of my body and learn then over years more and more how um uh, the the kind of the idea of instead of having orgasms being orgasmic is not a sympathetic response of being in a place of controlling and squeezing is in a place of a relaxed arousal that 
is capable of perceiving orgasmic waves and kind of serving with them as they come through my system. And the more I understood that, the more I recognized and realized that there are different areas of my body I definitely had to go in and release tension. And uh, I think since, I don't know, maybe four or five years, I'm absolutely in my sexuality through the roof. I love relaxed arousal. Um, and um, I love to share that with people, how to just dive deeper into this orgasmic capacity of themselves. So this is short story. Long. Hmm? You want to take it? Oh, um, well, I was reflecting as you were talking and, and my entrance into the armoring was also through, first I got really intrigued about learning how to move sexual energy in my body and through somebody else's body. And that was kind of the, oh, I want to learn that kind of. And in the beginning for me, the arming was really about um, learning to soften the body so I could open up and feel more and become more orgasmic. And just like Matt is saying, uh, it's really about becoming orgasmic. And so if you look at the mechanism of the armoring, many people think that the armoring is trauma healing, which no. <laughs> it's a part of it, but the more you work on the blocks, just like, okay, if we imagine that the, the body is energy strings, everything is just floating energy. This is the connection. This is pleasure. This is ec ecstasy, basically. We have like an ecstatic current within us, but trauma and stress and the way we live our life today blocks that. So we don't really feel ourselves more. Yeah. And if you apply that into sex life, like many... <laughs> what we want or what I want and, and what I see is more helpful and supportive for people is actually when we, we do have a better sex life, if we can relax more and if we, our body is soft and open. And that means to let go of the fantasy. That means to let go of, of, uh, of uh, let going of fantasy about the mind or transactional sex in order to learn to feel ourselves and feel the body more. And this is where the armoring is optimal <laughs> is really really optimal uh, so i would say anything like the arm ring like anything soft in the body working on the genitals learning to move energy in the body will support a sex life yeah to a better sex life but most of all for me it's actually uh, to come in such deep connection with myself so i feel that which is greater than myself it's not about for me it's not so, it's like I, I, lo I, I love to work on my body and soften my body so i feel alert awake alive so i can be in connection with with spirit like this is really the pathway and if i'm more in tune and alert and connection with this fine vibration within i just feel yeah more connected and this is for me the path of the armoring is like i want to be connected to spirit to god to alter my experience of being alive basically mm -hmm. and for me i'm going to wrap that up to bring that into lovemaking i mean this is when lovemaking becomes really epic for me <laughs> yes <laughs> yes <sighs> mm. uh, anything you want wait, to add to that Tim? yes yeah i do yeah so basically what i'm hearing here is there are two conversations one conversation is how can the armoring uh in general help you soften your body, which is prerequisite to have a good sex life, because uptight body cannot feel, cannot move, energy cannot go through, you're not conductive. So that's like first level of, if you like, benefit of the armoring to, to sex life is to just even external body, the armoring, any kind of the armoring you receive, limiting belief systems, uh, any kind of the armoring you receive and soften your body, that's good and also fluidifies your energetic body. And then the other part of the armory is actually during lovemaking. So there is two, like there mm. is pre and during, if you like, and, and after. So pre-care is what those two were talking about, you know, in general, the armoring yourself any way you can. It's amazing, not just for your um, sex life, but also for your general life. But then when it comes to the bedroom, my personal practice with my ex was to um 
we kind of use it as a foreplay. So before every lovemaking, there will be like 15, 20 minutes each way, the armoring each other's genitals to just open, soften, uh, like a foreplay. So that would be, um, and then sometimes what would actually have a word of warning, in order for you to do that, you actually need to know what you're doing. So if you've never done any de armoring and I mean, you don't have experience with giving it, then you cannot start doing it within a session, within a lovemaking session, because you don't know what you're doing. But once you do, so come to the training, any kind of training, get trained. And then when you start doing the, if you like a warm up or, or foreplay to the actual sex, it could actually turn into full on the armoring session. So you think it's going to be like 15, 20 minutes opening up, what actually turns into an hour of howling and proper kind of de armoring. And then you may or may not actually go into the sex afterwards. But if everything goes to plan, then you have a 15, 20 minutes warm up, and then you're both ready to have a most amazing lovemaking session. So that's kind of my five cents so far in a conversation. And what I would like to add on to that is because it's the vital piece to use that in lovemaking that what you learn in the training, it just needs a certain set of acuity and connectiveness and con conversation and attunement with your beloved one. And that's as well part of kind of what we teach communication and attunement. And can you can you explain that? I'm not clear. Well, I mean, that, that what you learn in the training based on the uh, uh, physical engagement as a practitioner when you work with people is one thing. But how to translate that in lovemaking when you are with your partner, knowing when to do what and, you know, it's just like lovemaking is not a session. It's, it's, it's not a professional session. And, and for example, if, 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 if I'm with my partner, I don't want to work with my partner and I want my partner to work on me in lovemaking. It's just, I just want to make love. I don't know. I want to, uh, to differ, wait, 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 back to differ. Just let, let it <laughs> <laughs> Hold your horses, wait. So this is, this is the funny thing. In the, this is the funny thing in the training that we have different opinions on different things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but basically like uh, how, how Om and I would do it, it was basically uh, I'm kind of opening her yoni and then we come to within like just like playful and, you know, juicy opening. And then I touch something and she goes, ow, or I feel something, uh, and then I just have to deal with it. So then there could be potential tear, there could be scream, there could be like Vroom, happens, and then uh, uh, and then deal with that, and that turns back into pleasure afterwards. So this what I mean about it's not a full on session like professional now. This is the armoring session, but it can happen also with a cock. Sometimes you kind of work with a cock and you touch a point where it's like, oh, this feels so. And then you work on it. So this is also the armoring within a lovemaking session. So that's what I mean. It's not like strictly professional, I'm detached from you, but it's more like pain, pleasure, pain, pleasure type potentially scenario. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. So, so I, I yeah. So I feel that if you go into a, uh, for example, uh, myo 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 fascia release is a form of the armoring as well. And this is epic to bring in before lovemaking and during lovemaking. So I tried to introduce that in my last level three, uh, um, because it's such an amazing tool to open the body. Yeah? And I feel that <clears throat> if we learn to have such, if, if, if two people know how to work with the armoring and can work on each other's body without making it like work on each other's bodies, but mm. feeling themselves and feeling the other, it just opens up the intimate connection. It softens, <laughs> it becomes a, a, just a, a circulation of energy that is delicious. Definitely. And to use some of fascia release, like if you, that combination with like pressure points and, and open, open, uh, like softened muscle is, is epic before, before lovemaking. Mm. Definitely. And also during lovemaking, I know there are some practitioners that worked on my body that is, it's just outstanding. 
<laughs> it's just outstanding because it's really a match about coming into the body. So that would be like the, the foreplay, the armoring that will connect more intimacy. Yeah? Instead of being so busy that I'm doing something on you, you do something on me. It looks like breast, cock, pussy, kiss, and then fuck. You know, that's quite boring. <laughs> so like, the, the, that's why working with the armoring and the armoring ourselves when we come into our own body more, I know I repeat myself, but this is this is the this is the way. This is the way. Like I meet so many people who want to have an epic sex life, but they are too occupied of technique or what other people look like, and they don't want to learn to feel themselves. And this is the part: like feel yourself, and then you can feel another, and then the meeting can happen. Yeah. Mm. Um, and I I just had a conversation recently with 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 a woman uh, about that saying that the, the the womb and the cervix in, in in particular is a is a portal into the divine specifically oh, yeah. when it comes to love making and she said as well how much she has suffered in her life through cervical pain when she got penetrated before she was ready and that this pain in itself on the most vulnerable part in in her sexual experience has um, uh, uh, caused the shutdown of her body, and then the lovemaking was over. Mm. And uh, and and then I talked about that that when it's been consciously touched in pain in a session, for example, and in lovemaking, I've mm. I've done that in the past, like you said, that the end uh, when when this part is con consciously touched and um, the 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 pain is not a life threat or a threat in itself and the stored emotion can be released mm. the orgasmic potential that is on the other side is just absolutely tremendous so, mm. totally yeah. i can just add into that so i think many many women you know are familiar with this pain that when they they are having they're making love and the man co goes too deep and maybe it's too hard and it's it's just feeds it just hurts a lot when coming close to the cervix the doctors would say that this is normal, you know, <laughs> no, this is not normal. When we are de-armored, when a woman is de-armored, she can t take quite a lot of, of, like, you can be quite, you can make love hard, you know, without pain, it's actually pleasure. So this is, some of you might know this and some of you might not know this, but like you mentioned, Dian, you mentioned the, um, you can use, use the, the cock to the armor. So if you're making love and you're inside and it's painful and, to communicate that and, and it's like okay okay i feel pain can you stop that can you hold and just be still and just breathe into that pain point and breathe and breathe and be still until it potentially dissolves yeah because that will release the trauma the physical trauma in itself from earlier maybe hard pounding or making love and not being ready and so on and this is why it's so it's such a beautiful dance when two conscious people use that in order to open the bodies more during lovemaking. Yeah. I mean, I feel like we need to maybe uh, quantify what the armoring is a little bit more here because... I had the same thought. Yeah? Yes. No, but it's really because like when you were yeah. saying like before, Matt, you said like when I'm making love, I just want to make love. And I really get that. But also what Sana and what I was kind of mentioning, it's, it's also the armoring doesn't have to be like a full-on session now, I'm a particular thing, you know, it can just be like a three minutes or five minutes. Yes. And then it just provides this, like another layer of onion skin has loosened up. And then the lovemaking goes to a different level, like another level deeper. And then you enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. And then suddenly it's like, right. And then, and then another level deeper. So it's like a never ending, unpeeling, unfolding, opening uh, process that can take hours. I mean, it does. So th that is kind of definition of, if you like, the armoring within a love making a one off. Matt. Yeah. Um, yeah. I had the same line of thoughts about that uh, to specific speak about the armoring. The armoring is not about the genitals, it's not about the physical form. There are so many different levels of the armoring on an emotional level, for example, so that when people, instead of fighting emotional about, I don't know, uh, having a kind of the fear guilt kind of anger loop or something uh, and just like being clear in their own emotional expression that you know emotional harmony can cause a better love making can have a better sexual um experience the same on a on, on a rational rational level kind of just like belief system getting them out of the way and then not having kind of conditioned shame 
experiences uh, in the belief system to just avoid sex, for example, or sex is just only possible in, in the marriage when it's on a kind of the Christian condition. But as we're already talking nearly half an hour about ourselves, uh, we don't want to talk, spend too much time on ourselves. We are here for you guys. And um, we would like to invite you to open up the microphone. And there are amazing questions in there. Um, actually, but it's I actually want to just touch on one question, if that's okay with you, oh, while uh, oh. kind of getting ready to talk. And so I uh, just want to, Hane, you uh, expressed interest to know whether at some point you really have to get down to body work because otherwise things won't shift. Actually, yes and no. It really depends who you are because some people are not physical. They're not the gateway to God, if you like, is not through the body. And so for them, opening the body really is not necessary. I mean, it will happen or it won't happen, but that won't change the quality of life. So some people are physical and for them it's super important, like for example, me. But there are many that are not. And so to expect, there is no rule. Sometimes yes, and sometimes not. It really depends who you are. I have a feeling that bodywork is always useful. Like, I mean, we, it doesn't matter who we are. We always gather tensions and blockages and there's stress in our lives and we, you know, we fall or we hit something. <laughs> I mean, so of course it's not depending on the persona, the, the body type and so on. But for me, it's like, I'm super energetically open, but to maintain like on a physical level and care for my body, it just makes me feel even more, um, connected so I, I truly believe that getting into proper body work is super useful also just to work with the structural like how posture and everything everything that we gather and collect throughout life yeah that shapes us with age i mean this is you and you are also like me you're actually body based person yeah but there are many people like you see them walking on the street you know librarians people that work with the heads you know, many of them are designed not to, like physique is just like a vehicle that's not really important. There are many more important aspects to the body, so, to, to the life than the body. So I, I, from my observation, I would say it doesn't apply to everybody. Mm -hmm. So I have a, I have a request. Um, Osanna, you want to say something? I'm just reading a question here, but you go first. Let's yeah, go. I would say, I mean, the questions are really great. And, and um for me, it's kind of linear reading. I rather would like you, if you have a question or something you would like to know, that you unmute yourself and ask the question. That's so much easier for us to engage with you mm -hmm. and answer them as if you're reading and guessing what the emotional vibration behind is. And as well, a form of the armoring that you unmute yourself and just speak into the microphone. I promise you will learn something. I just want to ask, I just want to respond to one question here, which I think is, is might be useful for many in the room. Correct me if I'm wrong. And that is Alex writes, uh, if we can share about our personal uh, experience, how the armory helped you specifically in sexual development. And for me, I can just share briefly, it was an absolute game changer. Even though I kind of always been very curious and open. Uh, but when I started with the armory and and were forced somehow, not forced, but uh, mirrored or held into experience the pleasure in my body without kind of giving it out or engaging with another, being with a professional who actually held space for me to feel myself while that person opened my body through the armoring and pleasure. It was an absolute game changer because suddenly I was like, oh, wow, here is me. Like I used to be such a pleaser and I wanted to give back. But suddenly I had to feel all this pleasure in my whole my own body and hold myself in that and learn to conduct myself, which made me connect to the my body's cap pleasure capacity on a whole new level. Yeah. And that get, went also when I started to do a lot of yoni armory, like I got so open and relaxed and soft and receptive and energetically. I mean, it was just incredible, like the orgasmic experience just increased massively because i started to feel myself much more yeah like matt said there's so many schools where also for women where we're we, like yeah you have to go kegels and train the muscles and squeeze and become tighter which is crap you know maybe some point you know after childbirth it's useful to tone the muscles but what happens if we are armored as a woman in our vagina and our yoni is that we don't feel 
And this is what de -arming, genital dearming does. Dearming is so much more, but it helps our yoni to relax and feel more because it increases blood flow. It takes away the tension. So it, it, on, <laughs> it made the whole difference. Yeah, it made the whole difference to do the armoring in my sexual uh, development. Yeah. I just, I just want to share one little story that I had in my first... We never stop talking about ourselves. Come on, guys. No, just, but this, this one What's is too question? good. Yeah. So, so I had a, I had my first de armoring session um, as an exchange with another practitioner who just learned uh, in a training to do de armoring on a man because normally what was out there about 15 years ago was just de armoring for women. So man de armoring is is a very young kind of uh, uh, a practice out there. And what happened is she just learned and came back and wanted to practice. So she was sitting between my legs, had a menu on one side <laughs> and just like did something on my genitals, on my penis, why she was just like pulling the pages on the menu instead of being in connection Manual. with me. Huh? On the manual. On, on the menu. So, so just like, now I need to do that. And I was just looking at her, just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah. So well, let's we, open it up for questions. While, while we're talking about ourselves, let me just talk about me a little bit. Just <laughs> Of course, please. I'm just going <laughs> to. <laughs> just very quickly. So. Uh, I had my first cock de armoring. It took about 25 minutes and it changed my life. Literally, it did. I had no idea how much tension my cock held because I never had it. Like, I was like, whatever. I mean, 45, 6 when I kind of had it, 7 maybe. So I, I thought I knew my anatomy, you know, but I didn't. So it was actually literally changed my life the way I felt myself as a man, the way I felt as a lover, and the way my partners could actually feel me. Because there was like massively more energy going through the cork afterwards than it was before. So that's just like a very short thing that I think every guy should have a cock de-armoring. Definitely. Minimum at least one. once. Yeah. yeah. And I want to add to that. <laughs> <laughs> After my cock de-armoring happened, <laughs> stop squeezing and clenching my PC muscle and the entire muscles around my sphincter my cock became kind of radiant and started to operate like an antenna seriously yeah 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 yeah, yeah. seriously true. so yeah <laughs> i remember you you bing 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 all right so de armor yourself please feel free to unmute yourself ask a question and uh, we're happy to relate with you when I hear you two speak, it also reminds me how the importance for men to receive the army because to go into the receptive mood and understand the value of surrender and receptivity. Talking about anal dearming here. Yeah, anal de mm. anal dearming, exactly. And, no, and also just the receptivity and going to vulnerability, I would say. I mean, many men uh, uh, that I've worked with are are uh, are not feeling comfortable being, with being vulnerable or you know going into being in a health space but when once men or many men allow themselves to do that there is a deeper heart connection and that can be supportive also to feel into the partner they are with you're so you're so political when you talk you know it's it's, it's beautiful but you can also be a little bit more direct so guys Unless you get fucked in your ass, you have no idea what, you, <laughs> what what your partner feels like. You really don't. How could you or, possibly know? You don't. You don't. You really need to kind of lay back, open your legs, and have it in. And then next time you're going to a woman, it'll be okay. Hold it here. Let's slow down. Now, are you ready, honey? Like, am I going too fast? <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> true. For that day, huh? and this, the same approach for 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 women to say don't let yourself be penetrated by a man who has not been penetrated because they know how it feels. So get a strap on, ladies. Yes, that's very empowering, actually. And, and you know, there is a reason actually why when we in our trainings, we obviously we do internal dearmoring both men and women. And mm -hmm. every training, what we always every single time men go first, because men have no most men, I don't want to be judgmental, but most men don't have an imprint of being penetrated. So it's easier for women to receive second because by then men already had the experience what it feels like to be lying back with your legs open and mm -hmm. 
So then when it's, time, when it's time for women to receive, men are a lot more attuned and a lot more ready to actually offer it. So yeah. there is a reason to that madness as well. And there is a day in between. Yeah. No, it's not. There's a day in between when, when men receive and then women receive. Not yeah, yeah. in between, but there's men one day and women one day. Yeah, yeah there's a day yeah. in between. Yeah. All right, let's okay. have some questions. Oh, let's, okay. <sighs> so we've fed you a bit. Is there any questions? We're going to be silent until you ask. I can go first. I don't, I'm just like trying to figure out what the question is. <laughs> I mean, I typed a couple of things. I, I just shared a little bit of my experience. So thank you for the call first, <laughs> first of all. <laughs> um, so I just shared a little bit of my experience. Um, like in 2020, I had like a lot of um, sexual energy or Kundalini energy or whatever you want to call it rising. A lot of stuff happened really heavy sexual trauma got triggered. I opened up to, to the higher realm. So a lot of things happened simultaneously and then COVID hit. <laughs> so it was like pff, a lot. And um, yeah, like a lot of things happened that were like not like within me and my body and this, and this uh, whole shebang that was, that led me to shut down because I was actually also like through all this energy and all this trauma being triggered in my root chakra, which I think happened for a lot of people in 2020, also to, you know, like, because they are there, uh, like, that's like the center that holds the fears and the prime primordial uh, instincts and stuff like that. So for other reasons, <laughs> um, that happened to a lot of people, I think. But um, I also like, kind of like had like, was afraid that I would go nuts a little bit, because it was like, just a lot. And so I completely shut down because I didn't have a healthy outlet uh, or a healthy experience with that because I also re really didn't know how to handle that. I didn't have guidance there. I did this all on my own and yeah, I was quite overwhelmed. And so th since then I'm like, you know, like making my way back <laughs> slowly. Um, and I actually attended um, the armoring workshops, but they were like more like, con uh, how do you say that? Like um, not, I think that not necessarily only the armoring, but like, you know, like mixed um, um, techniques. Um, so I had like a taste of that, but I never really had like a de armoring, like a, uh, yeah, like a de armoring session or anything like that. I'm just, I just tried to do this for myself somehow or on mm. my own somehow. So I would really love to hear like, whatever <laughs> comes to your mind when you hear that <laughs> come to a training okay yeah, yeah good yeah. Yeah. It's, it's super so, safe so. it's like super super safe space where you can just really dive into yourself so deep that you won't believe how deep you can go inside yourself and how much stuff you can uncover and recover and and normalize and humanize and and just let go of and and just like oh like on all levels of your being. Mm. It's quite, I mean, when we come to, when we talk about uh, self de we all three of us do a lot of it for years. And there are many things that we can do on our own. But there is also a lot to say to, to come to the training, which is designed, held and prepared for just that, to teach you. And then afterwards, you can work on yourself and stuff, you know, that would be my five cents. Okay, thank you. Mm. I feel uh, you say many things. <laughs> that's my thing. <laughs> I wonder how much you are in your body. Yeah, that's actually that's why I said like the that um, added the second part like with like I I was not in my body at all because of all the trauma because I was you know like, practicing. So if you just pause, just pause there for a moment. What happened if you just sink down into your lower belly and relax your pussy towards the chair? You start. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, I'm grounding I'm grounding I have to do this consciously all like a lot yeah, like, but you don't want to go there so when you go there you go away so this is uh, like yeah there is the fear of meeting yourself the stress maybe in the body uh, yeah it's it's uh, related to fight and flight mode it, it, totally. it I don't feel safe no, um, exactly. like being exactly. still <laughs> Yeah, I feel that. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Yeah. 
So first step would be to, to allow yourself to go to that place. And when you notice this, <sighs> like go back and just feel your pussy towards the chair and hold your hand on your lower belly. And <sighs> like a part of self dearming that I could offer you and everybody else in here is that when we feel that tension within the body, if we notice it, sometimes we are so much in a stress response that the body's tense and we, we go off fast. But to go, just <sighs> take a breath and kind of from the inside, feel that tension within the body and just breathe into that. <sighs> because then slowly and gently you meet yourself, yeah? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't need to be wild. It doesn't need to be extreme. It's a very gentle, soft way of just saying, okay, <sighs> I'm here and I create safety within myself. That is... Thank you. You're welcome. Mm. A very, very soft and relaxing and wonderful practice. Mm. Yeah, so my five cents would be that um, and many people have said that similar that, you know, 11 days of a dearmoring training and that intensity replaced two years of therapy. Mm. And, uh, and and if you kind of stuck somewhere in your sexuality or stuck somewhere in your belief or your emotional kind of um, conditioning about anything that might be a residue of COVID, you know, just like this 11 days, absolutely life-changing. Hmm. Um, and I see Alex's hand and yeah. um, please go for it. Thank you, Hannah, for being courageous and raising your hand. Oh. Um, well, basically, I'm, um, you know, I've been treating my cock like um, like it has to function, you know, like talking to it like this, you know, it has to function and you don't come too fast and it has to be erected uh, like and and um, like I think that's a big conditioning and I was trying to I, I'm trying to solve it like with like sensual masturbation and like being like really soft. So the idea of the armoring, like being hard again, like causing pain um, is interesting, you know, like for, for solving something, but it's like uh, opposite to the, the way I was trying to treat it. But I totally understand what the idea is behind, but maybe I don't really understand, but maybe you can comment a bit on it. Yeah. yeah, I don't think you do, because uh, what you said is that uh, the armoring and being hard and pain, and I didn't really understand what you meant by that. I can... Well, actually, that. it's it's just like, for me, the, the healing energy was more like going into softness, and that worked very fine. And now, um, like, bringing in the pain with the armoring... Um, I know I, I know about the the concept like of, of letting go and a softening in into it but but it's interesting that it's like a completely different um a, like a energy kind of that comes in and that heals I totally believe in it it healing and I've experienced it healing but it's it's just interesting that there's a different kind of energy compared to can, the soft energy I can talk into yeah. that it, it's not the armoring is not necessarily pain at all it can touch upon painful spots at times. It is not by no means need. I mean, all of us are different and some people might need a more pressure when we work on, on physical dearmoring, yeah? But sometimes if we, for example, have had a lot of friction-based sex throughout life, then softening the cock or the yoni with soft touch massage will actually be more beneficial than doing any hard work because the nerves are damaged, but through the soft touch, like from the friction, the nerves have become damaged and they kind of withdraw because it's like, ah, I don't want to be here. And that's where people experience numbness. And then they will need more friction in order to feel more and the nerves get more and more damaged. So the soft touch, you know, it's actually a dearmoring in that sense that it takes away that pain, that contraction and it reawakens the nervous system. So that can be for some people <clears throat> can be very healing. Like I hear it's been healing for you just on a, both on a mental and a physical level. And for some people who are really addicted to friction-based sex, it can be that they have to meet 
uh, a period of boredom because they don't feel so much. But when we actually touch the skin very, very gently, very softly, the, the nerves are kind of, uh, they are reawakening again. So that is, that is the armoring too. It just mm -hmm. depends on the, the cause, <laughs> basically, <laughs> and what we're dealing with and what is the history, yeah? So that is the armoring what you're doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we'd actually nourish the, the expansion of your cock even more because it will feel more welcome. It, it has an expandive effect, yeah? While the harshness yeah. can have a contractive, uh, can make contribute to more contraction. Yeah, and it's also about the relationship. Yeah. Um, very much. And that too is the armoring, you know? The, yeah. like, the performance and you have to get hard and now I'm not good enough and all this whipping that comes with all that mindset mm -hmm. to release that and like, okay, I'm it's okay, you know, life comes and goes and sometimes I'm hard, sometimes I'm soft and like, how can I just relax into life with what's happening right now? That mm -hmm. is also the armoring, you know, it's a form of self-acceptance and self-love. Mm. Mm. Nice. I just copied that, what you said, Sana. Mm. Uh, so the armoring is pretty much based on the individual in the moment. Sometimes you just need it hard and sometimes you need it soft. Mm. And this is what we as well do in the training. And I know you're coming to the training. You will just like get the full package. Um, you know, kind of when you start with your hands and when your hands will get it, the rest of your body will get it when you can bring that to your cock. So the sensuality and the softness, the sweetness, the deliciousness, the, the pleasant sensation that you just literally translate into your genitals. And when you can, that what you experience with your hand translate through your genitals and lovemaking, it just goes through the roof, the experience. Mm. So that's, the, and that's an experience that I can share from my own lovemaking. Uh, I would briefly want to add it on when, when we talk about this kind of soft touch and the armoring and lovemaking and, and enhanced sex life that goes for, for, for women as well, like to have a man who instead of trying to like rub the yawn ear and like oh, i'm gonna do something to her so she gets turned on or horny to just have this like feel her just touch feel be present there is no goal orientation it's just feeling it's just feeling that will have the same effect yeah it will soften her it will relax her it will feel like oh oh, you know, finally somebody's not forcing me into anything. I don't have to become anything. So that it becomes kind of the same effect that people want, but a more yin version of, like a slow cook. It becomes an expansion and much more juicy and much more, yeah, just much more um, delicious. Definitely. And that is also the armoring because we, we soften the tension. Yeah. We invite the yoni to reawaken. Yeah. Do you think, guys, there is a little bit of time to talk into uh, cock the armoring actual technique, or do we not go into it? Let's see if there's an interest in the room. Of course, we can talk into it. I have as well a uh, suggestion about a little exercise for a minute. You want to do the hum thing? No, a different <gasps> one. Yeah, not the cleansing. Not the cleansing. Yeah. Just a little breathing exercise that you just started mm. uh, with 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 Hannah. Um, okay, let's do it. It's, it's just a minute. It's 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 very simple, very easy. So what most people have learned is when they inhale, they squeeze their pelvic. Mm. Yeah. So they 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 learned to just like anus, sphincter muscle, or the PC muscle. But what I would like to invite you to for just one minute is when you breathe in, you just do so-called pelvic breath. So like as if you're breathing through your butthole or through your pelvic. So when you breathe in, you expand your pelvic. And when you exhale, you relax your pelvic. And let's do that just for a minute. Mm. You inhale through your pelvic and expand. You <sighs> exhale and relax. You inhale. Expand as if you're like pushing out slightly. Mm -hmm. Pushing slightly out, yeah. And you exhale and relax. Inhale and expand. Push out. Exhale and relax. 
And then we expand. Exhale. And relax. And then do a few on your own. Inhale and expand. Exhale and relax. And the last one, inhale and expand. Exhale and relax. And then just notice the sensation in your pelvis. All right, that was my little minute. Mm. Thank you, Matt. This exercise is amazing to bring into lovemaking. Mm. Because if you, <laughs> if you want to expand your orgasmic potential, like most of us getting hungry, we make love and we cannot <clears throat> get a greedy pussy or a greedy cock and we want to cleanse and, and come and so on. If we do the opposite, we mm. actually kind of feel more and we're going to last longer and we can build the energy more. Mm. So you can even explore that next time you make love to like, okay, shift the focus. Like, okay, how does it feel? Can I push out the energy? Yeah. And stay conscious with that and see what happens. Hey, are there any other questions about anything that is running in your sexuality in your life that you would like to have a look at? <clears throat> Corinne, was it just a call for you have a question? So, are you willing to put on your camera? Yeah. Uh, let me see. I I am on the camera now. No. 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 That doesn't work. I've different. I've I'm on my phone, so I have different options. Mm. Well, if it doesn't work, that's okay. Um. I know what you look like, so you can just talk. Oh, there we are. Yeah. No. That's what she looks like. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I look like. Oh, that's different. Uh, yeah, that's what I look like. Yeah, you are. Thanks yeah. Turning it on. What's the question? The yeah. question is, what's your question? <laughs> Uh, I don't. I don't have a really a question. I was just curious. Oh, okay. Then we, it was just a cough. Then. What are, what are you curious <laughs> about? Sorry. I thought it was on. I was muted. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. you, Aaron has a question. Thank yeah. you, Corinne. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not exactly sure how to phrase the question or whether or not it's answerable. But one of the things that drew me to dearming is that when I was younger, my orgasms were explosive, energetic orgasms. They would go up through my body, they would go down my arms, they would go into my head. Um, and it was very consciousness altering. Um, and I don't know what happened, but somewhere in my 30s or 40s, something happened that, that my, my orgasms became very localized in the yep. genitals. And... I have not been able to figure out how to reverse that. Mm -hmm. um, I've been doing a lot of dearmoring. I, I did a tantra massage training for a couple of weeks last year. Um, I've gotten amazing things out of it. I've remembered all kinds of things from my childhood from doing dearmoring, you know, that were repressed in my genitals. Mm -hmm. But I haven't been able to recover that piece of sexuality that allows for orgasms to go up through the body. And I'm just wondering 
what, I mean, aside from continuing to do the armoring, is there anything you could add or suggest? Or Can is there anything you can add about that? Can I ask a couple of questions? <clears throat> like to me, what it sounds like when you were younger, you were energetically open, and then you started your adult life and the pressures of life armored you, you succumb mm -hmm. to the pressures of life, and you started tightening up, which is the only reason why energy doesn't run through the body. So the question is, can you identify what actually happened to you? Was it like a one, let's call it traumatic or one big event? like a divorce or job change or something that happened that actually started the process of tightening or was it the gradual kind of loss of energy moving through? Mm. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that one. Okay. I, mean, I know I had a, a surgery in that area. Which area? Um, it was a perianal surgery. Oh, wow. Uh, what happened? Yeah. What happened? I had a perianal fistula. And they had to do surgery, you know, it's like an infection it gets under the skin. They have to, um, you know, put you under sedation and cut it open. And that's it. A pain in that area for a long time. That's um, it. I've, I've thought that could be part of it, but I, it may have started before then. That's it's the problem when too many years go by and then you just sort of lose track of time. Did you ever? I mean, you're armoring on that. Yeah, yeah, Sorry, just, yeah. Let, let me yeah. let me talk. Uh, did mm -hmm. you ever have the armoring on the actual scar tissue on a perineum? I think you were frozen a little bit. Yep, sorry. Yep, did you did you did you have a dearmoring on a scar tissue of the uh, operation? Um, I've only recently started to do it myself. Yeah. So I would um, like as a first step, I would recommend uh, have a practitioner do it to you because doing it to yourself is going to be very difficult to lose you because where you need to go, you need to go into the emotional dynamic not conscious not 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 like not holding space for yourself so you can actually let go so it would be easier if a professional was doing it and just gently holding the scar tissue and asking you to breathe into it and to feel to really pull out everything connected to that experience so that's one thing yeah and the second thing i would look at is potentially consequently to the surgery you started potentially developing ideas, negative belief system, if you like, which contracted your the whole sexual thing. Either you felt inadequate or you felt for, for because you see the habit takes about only three months to build. Mm. So if the thing was longer than three months, the contraction was longer than three months, and you consciously oh, yeah, work through it, then it becomes a habit and it becomes a subconscious pattern that runs itself. And so it becomes impossible to consciously break it. So then you need to work on that. So potentially I would kind of look into that as a first cause of like deal with that first. Once that's fully soft and all the tears are out and all the thing connected to that thing is out and you feel totally okay with it, then look further deeper. What else happened on your journey through adulthood mm -hmm. that had you contract? It could be loss of job, it could be loss of house, it could be a break of relationship, it could be a severe blow to your confidence, it could be a number of things that your body can interpret as traumatic and therefore contract. And as soon as you contract, all it happens is you just have to open the nadis, open the energy pathway so the energy can reach the end of your fingers again. There's, mm -hmm. there's no magic to it. So cool. I would kind of look into that. Thanks. And I could feel that just to, when when you just before you you t mentioned the the surgery, or uh, I could I picked up on sadness there. So most likely there is a there's a sadness in your body. I mean it's a deep trauma to get such a surgery, you know. So I think when yeah, just everything that Dion said, like find a practitioner who can hold space for you so you can meet that, mm. that contraction and that armor in the body for sure. Right. Yeah. yeah and then find out what was before that. Mm keep going back like you said yeah, and, thank you and my approach would be you know the orgasmic state that you talked about that you had in your life experiencing that is literally um uh like a parasympathetic approach yeah so there's no control there's no holding pattern you just open and like dn said whatever happened in your life that caused this contraction 
Um, I would recommend to go back into this parasympathetic um, vibration. And there's a, is a practice out that calls uh, TRE, what literally activates the brainstem activity in the neurogenetic tremors to get your body back into that state. And this in combination with sexual energy that is not based on the goal of climaxing, that is based on the pleasure that you can feel in your nervous system, like in relaxed arousal, that would be the directive that I would give to um, tap into. I don't know. Does it resonate kind of? You, yeah, thank you. You kind of know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, I, I do. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Appreciate all that. And come to the training. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. No kidding, really. Where, where are you in the world, Aaron? I'm in Florida. I'm in the United States. Mm. All right. That's a, that's a trip around the world. It's just a jump over the pond. Yeah. Where where do you have the trainings? Sweden. Sweden. Okay. Mm. All right. Any more questions? Thank you, Aaron. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. So we have time for two more. And if that's one of you, then take your ticket. Sophia, you seem to be shifting your position. Is there a question or are you just uh, shifting your position? What we, what we could ask if there's not really burning question, there are a few people who have done their last training in here. If you feel like comfortable unmuting yourself and sharing about your experience, does the, the armoring training had an impact on your sex life, positive or negative? Robert. Robert, we can't hear you. You're muted. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm unmuted. Um yeah, um I was both in the in the basic training, level one, and then in the level three uh training in Spain. Um and a couple of things come to mind where uh, that I would like to share. Uh, in the basic training, I was the armored on a scar in my groin uh, that uh, uh, unlocked a uh, big trauma of being abandoned by my parents. Because when I was three years old, I had to go to the hospital. I had that operation and my parents couldn't stay overnight in the hospital at the time. Uh, I'm talking about late 50s. And doctors were gods and, uh, you know, shoot parents away. So I, I spent a couple of nights alone in the hospital. When I was being the armored on that uh, scar, uh, the, the memory of being abandoned came back. And uh, it was a big release of, of trauma that liberated a big piece of my, uh, well, liberated a big piece in me. Um, the second thing I want to share is about the, the, the training in Spain, the, the armoring through pleasure. Um, and again, um, first of all, uh, the, the, uh, the fascia training that we received was really, really uh, interesting and very nice to soften the body, as uh, Susanna pointed out. Uh, I'll get back to it uh, in a minute, but... Um, after the, uh, in the second half of the training, I was being the armored um, by uh, a lady. And she, during the de-armoring, asked if she, if I wanted her to put her hand on my genitals. And I said, yes. And she just put her hand on my genitals. And with the other hand, she, she continued the armoring my chest. And the, um, the touch on my genitals actually was kind of a, an, uh, a key to the lock on the anger that I held to, towards my father because my father was very strict and it talked to me about how I was a bad boy and I had to uh, you know, clean up my act towards my mother and, and not be a naughty boy and, and wild boy. boy. And, and that pressure that my father exerted on me was was really also influencing my 
uh, sexuality and my ma my masculinity, uh, the expression of my masculinity for a very, very long time. So when um, the dearming on my chest uh, actually pr produced results because of the the unlocking of the sexual nature of my trauma, uh, the sexual aspect of my trauma, of my father being very strict on now, um, I released a lot of anger towards my father, and um, and that liberated a lot more of my uh, my original inherent masculinity. Um, so, getting back to the fascia uh, massage. Um, I have an exchange partner on, uh, in the Netherlands, and we exchange massages and play a little bit with the with with uh, sexual energy. And uh, when I got back from Spain, um, I gave my partner a fascia massage, and she just melted under my hands. And then we went into an energetic massage which was also taught in Spain. Um, and and we just had the most wonderful, energetic lovemaking mm. uh, as a result of the the trainings that were I, that I received uh, through you guys. So um, I can tell you, uh, you know there's there's many different forms of trauma that and and trauma can take many different forms and uh, block can block you on many different levels, uh, including the sexual uh, sexual level, uh, and it's not just about pain. It's it's about actual trauma and reliving and releasing the the emotions which which are from the past and were never released in a proper way in the training or in the dearming session. And then uh, you know feel liberated, and these traumas like dissipate, and are gone, and you just you know feel free from that original trauma uh, mm. once you've released the emotions uh, associated with it. Thank and you. So, yeah. So happy yeah. for you to hear that, Robert. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, so much. I'm happy too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, so Thanks. take the training. <laughs> Thank Ulrike, you. Do you feel like sharing? Who, me? Ulrike. Oh, Ulrike. Yes, You're I smiling. think I can do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine sharing. Um, uh, I was with Robert Jan on both trainings uh, and, and with some other people, so um, it definitely changed. Um, I think it's on many levels, like um, we were not just taught the armory, we were also taught consent mm -hmm. and the direct route of touch. And I think that is one of the first things where lovemaking for me now changes. And mm -hmm. very clear, yeah, we're very clear whether when I touch somebody, whether it is for me or for the other person, both is fine. I just, I'm aware of it. Um, I'm very clear with saying what I want. And I receive very good feedback for that, which is also very nice. Um, um, and for me in the last um, months, what has really happened is the, the topic of um, embracing and letting go. So for that, I guess, uh, lovemaking and the armoring just sort of feeds into it because once you start embracing whatever there is and, and expanding and becoming soft then obviously it's, it's like you guys said before you you go away from the clenching and we did the exercise with the the, the inhale and and release and push out and i find it much easier in in self-love mm. than when other people are involved so it's it's still sort of hard to not go into the pleasure patterns mm. Mm. so that definitely it, it did change a lot and I also found that um, like I've been dearmoring a lot of men in training sessions and um, I can only tell the guys in in here that are thinking about going um, that the dearmoring does something to your I don't know if I should say manhood but it is something about yeah I always have this thing like dropping into your balls <laughs> 
Yeah. I know you guys, I, I do that all the time, but I, I can actually feel it happening when I de-armor people. Yeah. And then they come back and say things like they, they feel like there's a new operating system downloaded or they feel that finally they are the man that can take the hand of the inner child. That sort of thing is the feedback that I get. Mm -hmm. So I can only encourage men to also yeah, face it. And, and, and it doesn't necessarily have to be cock de-armoring. Like I've had these experiences even with external de-armoring. Like when I have my knee in a root chakra, and they're and and I actually press down on their shoulders, or they have to fight me, and and finally have a woman who can hold fighting back that sort of thing, and then just really come up and and be there with their masculinity. Mm -hmm. So it it goes on many levels, and I am I'm, I'm very sure that that also changes sexuality afterwards. So mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. my five cents. Thank you, Ulrika. Thank, thank, thank you so you. much, Ulrika. Thank you. I just want to give it, it like a little thing. While, while you're in this transition, Ulrika, of learning the expansion during lovemaking or being maybe pleasured by somebody else, if I heard you right, that you're still kind of finding the mind-body connection, you can stay with your 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 yoni kind of pushing out, I guess, as if you inhaling, pushing out and holding her open. And that can help you to get into that mind-body connection. It would also increase the sensitivity. Yeah. So you can start. Tried, I, just, I just realized that when I'm by myself, I don't lose the focus. And I'm no. when I'm with other people, yeah. I just lose yeah. the focus easier. Yeah. Yeah, because there is so much other stuff going on and so yeah. many sensations. Yeah. That yeah. You just get distracted. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Thank you. Mm. You're welcome. So um, we have... Maybe one more person who want to share from the last training, if there's no other question. And then there was from Arif a um, uh, request talking about the training, the logistic, how the training goes, days, and so on. Um, is can there I anybody? Suggest, who... Can I just suggest, if there are no burning question uh, questions from the people here, uh, let's talk a little, like a few minutes into uh, the technique of cog the armoring. I can do it in one minute. And then, uh, okay. and then we can talk about the training because okay. Arif and probably some others want to know about logistics. Mm -hmm. So let's first see if there is a burning question from the people here. Any other, any question that you have? Now it's a good time because otherwise we're going to say goodbye very soon. <laughs> the only time. Yeah, they want to hear how you talk about cock the armor in the end. Exactly. They will, they will, don't worry. <laughs> that, that's not going to go away. But uh, I have a huh? I, I have a question because okay. uh, I'm absolutely new in the armoring. <clears throat> to be honest, I tried to translate it with the translator and the outcome was not giving me long. 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 Understand, yeah, understanding. Um, I started a lot of uh, breath work. Um, Dia knows me since nearly a year now, and I, I'm a very stressed guy. I had a, I was working at the stock exchange. My body was stressed, stressed, stressed. I can't feel myself. Mm. I was my whole life under tension, and uh, for many years that tension satisfied me. Um, after I started breathing, um, I feel my body, I get a little bit more connection. Or for me, it's already a lot of connection. Um, so I understand breathing as well as a lot of uh, energetic work of letting go, of letting the energy flow by the breathe. How is the armoring working? Because I have absolutely no clue what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I can answer it in one question, in one sentence. Come to the training, man. Like basically, <laughs> no, 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 there is a reason for the madness. Uh, no, no, no. But the reason is that actually the promise, the only promise of the training is, well, not the only, but one of the promises of the training, it's 11 day training, is that at the end of 11 days, you're going to know exactly what the armoring is and when it's not. You're really deeply going to understand what it is. And so for me to answer that question right now would be not possible because you need to experience it. Then we need to talk about it. Then you need to feel into it. Then we need to approach it from another angle, another angle, another angle. And then at the end of 11 days, you're going to say, oh, wow. 
okay, now I get it. So really, it's like it's super deep, like it's very extensive. It's a very all encompassing practice. It's not just ABC press point ABC, that's ridiculous. It's like it's a massive subject that takes a long time to, to grasp. I, I have one sentence uh, that, that I can add to that. Is you know that you're stressed, Kim, right? You know yeah. that you're under pressure. The armoring is that you have a conscious choice to be relaxed. And how did you teach me? Or is it kind of energetic work? We're going to uh, talk about it in a minute. Yeah, yeah, okay. we can talk. We can bridge that into to into Arif. Arif's question. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. All right. Any more questions, or are you all kind of questioned out? Well, I, I, I guess you can talk about cock the armoring. Yeah, you promised the cock the armoring before. All we right. So let's let's assume that this is, this is cock. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, like crash course in two minutes for cock the armoring. Basically. Uh, a cock is part of the body, like any other body part. It uh, it has uh, uh, blood vessels going through it. It has many, many nerves going through it. Uh, it has muscles in it. It uh, has fascia in it. It uh, basically, it's just like any other part of the body. So we're treating it exactly. Nancy's coming back. Somebody's doing it. Okay, thank you. Ma. I did it. Yeah. So uh, working on a cock, we treat it exactly the same as any other part of the body, which is if you imagine massaging your arm, you would kind of feel around and then, oops, this point here is quite sore and tight. And when I press into it, it's like, oh, OK, this feels like Phew. and then I need to breathe into it. <sighs> Relax and then it will soften. Well, the cock is the same. So what you're going to do is, first of all, you're going to massage it a little bit like you massage your arm before you start working on it, you know, just a little bit, little bit. So you do the same with the cock, you do the same with the cock. Massage, massage, pull it a little bit, pull it to this side, pull it to that side, you know, until kind of it gets a little bit like, you know, full of blood. It will never be hard, like hard cock, you know, the, when you start the armoring a hard cock, it will most, you most normally will go soft. And so then uh, you start pressing. So you start pressing and you squeeze for pretty much as much as you can or as much as it feels good. And then you hold it for like half a minute waiting for any kind of response of uncomfortable, intense pressure, any kind of sensation that like any other part of the body might want to be released here will be exactly the same, the same sensation. And then you just breathe into it and you hold it and you just you don't massage it, you just hold it simply for maybe one minute, two minutes until it goes softer, you will kind of feel it going softer, softer, softer. And when that part is done, you massage it a little bit and then you move a few millimeters or half a centimeter down the road. And then you press again. And you kind of keep doing that on a shaft all the way from the head, all the way to the bottom, to the insertion. And then you go sideways and you do it sideways as well. Each press is going to be between one and two, three minutes. Depending if there is nothing you press in, like, you know, massage your body, hand, there's nothing here, nothing here. Oh, yeah, there's something here. So then you massage this more. You do exactly the same on a cock. And so basically you just cover it sideways, front ways, up and down the shaft until pretty much all the painful points have been worked through. And then I call it a shower cock yoga. Every time you shower, you just kind of grab your cock. You pull it to the left and you pull like you really kind of you extend it as far as it goes. And you a guy, you know exactly how much pressure you can pull to it. And so you go to the left, hold it for half a minute, one minute, breathe, breathe, breathe. Then go to the right, pull it to the right. The same breathe, breathe, relax, relax, relax. Then pull it down, hold it, stretch it, pull it up hold it, stretch it. So this whole thing, and then maybe figure like eight, you know, this way, that way, this way, that way. So the Don't whole thing- Don't break your thumb. Huh? Don't break Don't his thumb. Break your thumb. Oh, go on, look, whoops. Anyway, so basically, <laughs> <laughs> so the whole thing will take like five minutes in a shower. But the, the pressing point, the, the major thing to really get into your head, it's exactly the same as massaging your neck, shoulders, or your arm. 
mm-hmm. like every time you feel a hard point uh, uh, like anything buzzing anything zzz, anything greasy you just hold it lovingly with attention and you breathe into it you feel into it and you relax that's it basically the whole process can like 20 minutes half an hour max and then you're done and during the training i share one specific practice how to do the same thing with your balls if you're having problems with blue balls like you take two bricks and you go (laughs) (laughs) or you hit your heart somewhere else on there so you shift your anyway so basically are there any questions regarding this uh brief technique i want to add i want to add on one thing to that brief technique which is useful both for the armoring the cock and and also for lovemaking that is that many men are used to masturbate and kind of quite hard friction based so the 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 muscles around the root gets tensed and this can block the blood flow so this is why the armoring helps as well so instead of have this downward going movement change and have an uh, down and up outward going movement because that will increase and soften the cock and increase the blood flow and kind of release the tension you can also go in and press around the root yes of the cock because then there's a lot of muscles there that gets tensed and the older we get of course the t- more tense they become so the massage around the cock and pull the cock outwards yeah that will also help okay. so that, are you helpful? okay yes and please ask a question a yeah there's a question there go ahead. obviously not helpful okay thank you no. <laughs> my question or was it somebody else you, I think it was you. Okay, yeah, I had a technique question. So mm-hmm. I was actually doing that recently. Um, I'd taken another dearmoring course online, and um, I was using doing a similar technique, and I found a point um, on my shaft that was painful. And so I spent time on it, and I would do it like every night before I went to bed. Mm-hmm. And now I'm very aware of that spot all the time. And I'm wondering, did I do something wrong? Or what do you mean you're aware of it? Work? What does that mean? Uh, it just made it a very sensitive, it like the pain, I didn't feel the pain initially until I was sort of pressing and I'm like, oh, this is, this is a little sore here. So I held pressure on it and I breathed and now I'm just sort of aware of that spot on my penis on a somewhat regular basis, So especially if I'm having sex with my wife or something, it's like ultra so, sensitive now. Okay. So imagine like you're working on one point on your arm. Yep. working every day on the same point for how many days did you do it now like few yeah yeah like a week or something yeah right so imagine you're working on the same spot on your arm for a week i mean the poor thing is going to be exhausted it's going to feel like leave me alone you fucker what are you doing to me you're strangling me like get off me <laughs> so like be gentle to your cock being you know be kind you know it's the only one you have so like work on it for a while and then let go like let it breathe the same as any other part of the body and so and then massage a little bit and relax it but love really is the key like it's the feeling of acceptance and love and and cherishing and and wanting good for it you're not killing it you're not like god i need to get you out i fucking need to get you out no 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 because that aggravates the nervous system aggravates the tissue it can also bruise you like you can bruise the arm you can also bruise the cock so don't do it so the pressure basically what we say if you imagine between one and five one being just touching like no no pressure and five being the pressure they cannot contract they cannot breathe through you get me so you want to be between three and four on the scale one to five so that the pressure you feel it three is like complacent a little bit like lazy i don't have to really focus on it four is already like and this is where you want to be. Five is like this. So you don't go too, too much. And lovingly, you know, with consciousness, with awareness, with love, you release it a little bit. And maybe tomorrow you go back to it and release a little bit more. And then you go somewhere else. Then you come back to it the next day. If you work with it like this, then it will come off, you know. And if you choose to go the Thanks. pain the pain route, yeah? So sometimes it's the opposite. It's just going to be a one or two because we want to reawaken mm-hmm. the nerves. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. So I want to bring time awareness into the yeah. room. And I would like to as well to acknowledge the question here from Arif. And, uh, and uh, Sana, are you willing to share a little bit about this gold finding in the mansion? 
Oh, the Hello. gold finding in the mansion. The yeah, gold finding. Not... Did I miss something here? Are we gonna find some gold? I mean, this nice place. Mean... Oh, okay. Know. So, what is the gold? I mean, the, the about the mansion. The mansion is the gold. The mansion. Oh, the mansion. The mansion is the gold. Is the gold. No. Yeah. <laughs> so, Arif, let me see. I'm reading your question here. Here. Uh, talk more about the logistics of the training. How long does the training go on each day? What does the day look like? <laughs> okay. So the training is a, uh, a, um, is 10 days. 11. And 4 to 14th. Okay. Uh, and we go, it's long days. We start at eight o'clock in the morning. We go to nine, nine thirty in the evening with blocks <clears> of <throat> pauses in between during the day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, you will learn a skill set, like let's say 50% personal processing and 50% technique. Yeah. And the arming itself, the way we teach it and the way like it's a lifestyle, really, like you will learn both physical pressure points, how to do the armoring, how to open a body through this like hands on body, the armoring. But in order to be a successful practitioner and helping people to go into more power and potential, it's important that you also learn to work with a lot of other skill sets, such as consent work, how to set up sessions, emotional release work, communication, knowing your own shit, projections, uh, shadow work. Uh, so it's, it's a, a training that is very well designed in order to equip you with the toolbox so you can be more masterful in life and pass that on to your clients. And what is very unique with this training is, and with this form of dearming that we do, is that we include genital touch and genital dearming. So that's kind of the signature of the training. So, so that means that some some uh, sessions are uh, uh, you do in a group format. Some is theory. Some are clothes on. Some of the dearming sessions are clothes off. Yeah, everything is optional. But in order to sign up. This is like we agree upon working on the opposite gender. That's a must, I would but say. Also, we encourage people to work on the same gender Absolutely. because it's also good for men to receive from men and for women to receive from women. Yeah. Uh, the last part of his questions, are we practicing on ourselves only or on others as well? There are practices that you do on your own. There are practices that do with as a group and there are practices that you do with a couple. So you lie down and you be a client and there will be giving and then you're going to become, become a practitioner and then going to be a client. So it's like a mix of multi-layered uh, give and receive. And what I would say with this training, I mean, this will be, I think it's the 16th training we do now. Wow. And it's a really refined uh, process that we've done and been going through and, and the result or what we see that people come out with is absolutely, I mean, I feel really proud, actually. I don't, like, I, I know it can sound ridiculous, like it's our training and of course we like it and so on, but the effect it has on people and the amount of empowerment, like it's, you know, our our style is to bring people into authenticity, really. Like this is the world I want to live in where people are in connection with their power and potential. None of us see us as like, we the teachers and you have to do this. No, we like, we really search for the best in each individual. And it's, 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 it's magic, <laughs> I would say, yeah. It's really a piece of magic. So we're going to hold it this time in a very beautiful mansion, just one and a half hour outside Stockholm. So it's very spacious and double and single rooms. And it's not often we see that in these type of centers. So it's, it's very sauna. nice. It's, we have a sauna. Yeah, big sauna. And so it's a big mansion from, yeah, I don't know, I mean, a couple of hundred years old or something. So does anybody else have any question about the training or did we cover all the potential questions they might have about it? I have something to share for everyone. I just I, I will drop a link if you just want to have a call and want to figure out what the training is and you need more right. information, please feel free to connect with me. Choose a day and time that serves you best. Jump on a half an hour kind of just casual such a conversation and get your questions answered. Actually, maybe we can also share uh, the Armoring Arts uh, website just if people, because uh, also Sana and I are very open for one-to-one -one conversation. Okay. If you want to deepen the questions, if you have any kind of personal stuff that you want to discuss, if you want to see if the training is for you or not, or just get in touch. We are very open to, to talk to you, you know? Definitely. Yeah. Training. 
-hmm. and we are nearly booked out so there are not many yeah. places left so yeah. just a side thing yeah okay um we are <laughs> over time yeah. um i want to start closing it down and i would like to say thank you everyone for joining here today and uh, talking about sexuality and de-armoring is one of my preferred themes to talk about. I appreciate and acknowledge each one of you spending 90 minutes with us. And uh, I hope you just got something out of it and learned something. And I say thank you for my heart. And I would love to see you at the training if you choose. And I would kick it to Sana or the end. I just want to say, uh, I think, Sana, you agree that uh, for those of you that are here in the room, uh, if you choose to come to the training, we give you a discount just for saying kind of thank you for being here with us today. Shall we say like, I don't know, 150 or 200 euros off or something like that? Sana? Definitely. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, if you want to uh, uh, sign up any of you here, you're very welcome to come. So, I mean, actually, we need to talk to you first, but most probably you're very welcome. And uh, uh, yeah, just let us know and uh, uh, we can book a call and discuss it. So thank mm. you for coming and uh, see you next time. Mm. Yeah, also my five cents today. Thank you so much. I was sitting, I was really tired today before this. I, oh, I don't have more to give. And then as I sit here and just... You're full of beans. Yeah, I feel so much better. So thank you for making my life better. <laughs> I, yeah, thank you for being here. And I hope to see you. Uh, Kim, next one is going to be in uh, autumn. You can find it on theamoringart.com. I think 4 to 14th November or something like that. I'm not sure. I'm but... not sure, but we'll find, we'll find it on the website, yeah. So, yeah, thank you so much. And if any questions arise, just like, write it to us, yeah, because yeah, we love yeah. writing myself, but yeah. we love to do this, uh, this offering for you. So each kind of offering turns into a new offering because people ask for stuff. So thank you for doing that. Thank you so much. Enjoy your day and ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. Ciao, ciao.